Today we're going to move on to the next topic in beams, which is developing an idea of stress in beams. And in particular, we're going to be looking at normal stress sigma today. So no shear stresses yet. Last time we developed the geometry or the kinematics. So that was last time. So that means we have our we know what normal strain is. And so today we're going to be learning about the material constitutive modeling. And then we're going to do equilibrium. And then we'll be done. Okay, so if we look at number two, we know that sigma is equal to E epsilon, done. So there's number two. Just use Hooke's law, nothing fancy there. You could further simplify by putting in minus Y kappa if you wanted to, that's fine, doesn't matter. Okay, so that's number two. And then we have to talk about number three which is equilibrium. Remember, an equilibrium always involves some integration. And so, um, if we look at the cross-section of a beam, z, y, it's going to go some distance y up to some dA. Let's call that dA then we know that the little differential moment is going to be the moment arm y times sigma dA. So moment arm times force. And this is going to be negative. Notice why this is negative. Because if we have positive curvature and we have positive y, then we have compressive stress, which is a negative stress. So that's why this becomes negative. Okay, so the total moment this is the external force, right? External force has to be equal to the integral over the cross section of dm, which then is equal to um, minus sigma y dA. Let's go ahead and plug in our definition for sigma here, which is um, minus another minus kappa e y y dA minuses cancel get y squared we assume we have constant curvature constant material properties so we need y squared dA okay, and then this is just the polar or not the polar but the standard moment of inertia about the z axis that's very important because we're measuring bending about the z-axis. This is about the z-axis. Okay, and then we usually rearrange this a little bit, giving us the final equation that kappa is equal to m over e i. And then we can also um, uh, so this, this, this shows you how the applied moment relates to the curvature of the beam, but we're often more interested in how the applied moment relates to the internal stresses. And um, we have that uh, kappa is equal to, so if we replace kappa with what we derived before, it is, um, let's see. minus sigma x over e y. So we replaced this with, that's what kappa is from last time. Or if actually it's just this here. It's equal to m over e i. Okay, the e's cancel. Pull the y up. Put the minus sign over there. So sigma x is equal to minus 
m y over i. Okay, so there's our other big equation. There's all of them for the day. So here's just stress and strain, stress and curvature. This is curvature and applied moment, stress applied moment. And this is the big one here that we're going to use the most. It's called the flexure formula. But you don't need to worry about that too much because you just know how to drive it and you know that it's just equilibrium for this particular application. And again, this is the moment of inertia about the z-axis. It is very important. Okay, another thing that's important to know is that we often take this y over i and we'll sometimes just replace it with s in the denominator. So it'll be minus, it'll be um, minus m over s, where this is the section modulus. Section modulus. So if you see s, don't be mystified by it. It's just a way to, it's just a shorthand for um, i over y. So s is equal to i over y, and then it appears in the denominator. Just a simplification. It's not, it's not saying anything new. Okay, let's just do a quick example that shows what we care about here, usually. If we had an example, let's say we had a simply supported beam. Okay. That had a uniform distributed load. Here, maybe some point load. D, okay, 12 kips, CQ is 1.5 kips per foot, let's see, this is being applied 9 feet from the left, the whole length is 22 feet, okay, and let's say it's a rectangular cross section, right? So the distance to the top and the bottom is the same, and we'll set it equal to C. So the total height is 27 inches. And the base is 8.75 inches. Okay, now you'll do some statics, which I'm not going to reproduce here. You're going to do some statics, and you're going to develop the shear and bending moment diagrams. We don't yet care about v of x, but let me put it here for completeness. It's going to look something like this. So this is 23.59. 20, this is all in my notes, by the way. If you like to see this, it's minus 1.91 and minus 21.41. What we're really after is the bending moment diagram because what we want to know is where the maximum bending moment is. It turns out it's at this point here at 151.6 and that's going to be at the same place that the point load is applied. And so what we want to know is, is we want to know the maximum tensile stress and the maximum compressive stress. From the loading, we know that this is going to deflect into a smiley face, so we know we have positive kappa in this example. And so we use our flexure formula, and we say minus m. And we know the tension is going to be at the bottom of the beam, which is a distance minus c from the medial axis over i, and the i here you could either calculate or look up in the back of the book from the cross section. The compression is going to be exactly the same, but opposite sign. Compression happens at the top, and so it looks like that. So we end up with 1710 PSI minus 1710 PSI. Notice if this if this was some other shape, like maybe it was shaped like that or something, then the neutral axis may not be the same distance, right? These distances might be different, right? They may not be the same depending on the cross-section. 
the rectangle, it's so nice and regular that, that the distance to the top and the bottom from the neutral axis are the same. So the value of the, the tensile value of the stresses, of the, the tensile stress and the compressive stress are the same except opposite sign. Okay, and that's basically it. So we've now completed our three steps, kinematics, constitutive, equilibrium. We've derived the equations for in each case, and that is the complete picture under the assumptions of pure bending. Notice in this case, though, we're not even in pure bending. Okay, this, this has, there is shear, but notice that the value of shear is quite a bit smaller than the bending moment, and so we are going to basically assume negligible, that, it, that impacts the behavior of the stresses, the normal stresses, in a negligible way. We'll revisit this assumption a little 